Hello, it's coffee time. Ooh. Welcome to Brewing Better Living. I'm Erin. Here on this channel, I concentrate, concentrate a lot on um, celiac disease content since I have celiac disease, also eating gluten-free. And I have been thinking a lot about the information that people need when they're first told you need to eat a gluten-free diet. So I've been trying to formulate a lot of information. I'm gonna figure out how I'm going to um, get that to you, whether that be in you know, an e-guide, um, an e-guide, e-book, e-guide, whatever <laughs> you wanna call it, in some sort of electronic format, um, whether I want to release different lists. I actually just did a list of um, products that I recommend through Amazon because I've gotten a lot of stuff through them over the years because I tend to try to buy in bulk a little bit. And sometimes you might find that you can buy a case of gluten-free pasta off of Amazon and it ends up being less expensive than if you just go to the store and buy it like, you know, a box here and there as you need it. Um, of course, that does vary. And you always need to check your prices and be aware of that because I have gotten things cheaper at the grocery store. I have gotten things cheaper on Amazon. I have often ordered directly from the companies and gotten things less expensive doing that, doing it that way. So that gets me to what I want to talk about today, which is going gluten free and doing it on your budget. Okay. You don't want to mortgage your house or do a second mortgage on your house so that you could eat your gluten free diet that you need to eat. Um, I heard something back probably like two, three weeks ago now that really, really stuck with me. And I've repeated it a couple of times in forums when I've been like, you know, responding to like people's questions and whatnot. And I don't remember the name of the podcast that I was listening to, but basically they were talking about the expense of eating gluten-free and the woman on the podcast said, the last time I checked, a bag of potatoes costs the same whether you are gluten-free or not. And I just went, that is so true. And that kind of gets me to my point today. Eating gluten-free um, on a budget, so to speak, does not have to be impossible, okay? If you are going to run out to buy all sorts of processed and packaged gluten-free foods, like gluten-free replacement foods to replace what you can't have anymore, it's going to be a lot more expensive. I repeat, a lot more expensive. A lot, a lot, a lot, okay? But tip one <laughs> when you're going gluten-free, and this might be better for you overall because it's you know, probably a healthier way to eat. It's a little bit gentler on your body than taking in a lot of the packaged products that, by the way, gluten-free packaged products have a lot of stuff added to them. Some are better than others, but some are almost worse than their gluten-containing, you know, sister products, so to speak. But my first tip that I would always say is try to stick to naturally gluten-free foods. And when I say natural, naturally gluten-free foods, I kind of mean like, you know, if you were to basically shop the perimeter of your grocery store, so to speak, and I know not every store is set up that way, but you know, your fresh, plain meats, your fresh, plain seafood, or your frozen seafood that also is one ingredient, okay? Um, your fresh fruits and vegetables that aren't cut up or packaged, that aren't like pre-sliced, you know, like they do in some supermarkets, because you don't know like where that's been prepped, whether it's been in contact with um, other foods that might contain gluten, stuff like that. So all of that in general, your fresh one ingredient foods, um, your frozen one ingredient vegetables that don't have seasonings or marinades on them. Um, if you can tolerate dairy, your plain dairy products, your plain hard cheeses, plain milks, um, plain like yogurts that you can add things to at home. Okay. Of course you always want to read labels and check, but for the most part, you're going to find that almost all of these things are okay for you and don't have gluten. So I would say that that would be the best tip that I could possibly give you would be if you concentrate on those naturally gluten-free foods, you're not paying that premium 
for that gluten-free um, processed and, and packaged product. So do that. And now the second thing would be, because come on, you might want to treat every now and then. You might have a celebration or you have people over and you want to do a special dessert or you want to try a gluten-free pizza or gluten-free or gluten-free bread or something like that. That is the stuff that costs so much. Um, things like gluten-free cookies, gluten-free pizzas, gluten-free breads that you buy already packaged at the store are going to be really expensive, okay? They're gonna be so much more than the gluten-containing versions of those products. But what you can do, and I actually have gotten pretty good at this over my years of being gluten-free, is make them yourself at home. Granted, a bag, a good, a bag of good gluten-free flour, like a, um, they have like these ones that are like one-to-one -one flour, or they'll call them measure-to-measure -measure flour. I like the Bob's Red Mill one. King Arthur makes a decent one. Look at the ingredients. It depends. There might be other things that you're trying to stay away from. I usually go with the Bob's Red Mill because it doesn't contain any corn products, like cornstarch or anything like that, whereas I think the King Arthur one does. So you kind of got to know where you're at and what you can and can't do. You know, eventually you'll, you'll figure that out, I'm sure. But my point is that you, these flowers will be a little bit more expensive or maybe like a lot more expensive than like, you know, your regular things of all purpose, gluten containing flour. But when you're making like the cookies or the cupcakes and the cakes at home or the breads and the pizzas at home, that's a huge cost savings. So even though you're spending a little bit more on the flour and, and stuff to make these products, in the end, you will save a lot of money. Um, it's actually quite easy to do a lot of this stuff. Things like, I've found that cookie recipes are the easiest to just put in the measure to measure flour and they are delicious. I've fed gluten-free cookies to people <laughs> that have come into my house or when I've taken them places, they do not know that they're gluten-free because they do not taste gluten-free. I don't even know what gluten-free is supposed to taste like, but let's just say that they taste really, really good. Just like your cookie recipes will vary and one chocolate chip cookie that somebody makes will taste different than the next. These might taste different, but they taste really good. So it's just that common variation that exists between recipes in general, not the fact that they're gluten-free. Um, so I've had great success with the cookies, with the, with cupcakes, um, with cakes, um, pizzas and breads. Yeah, it'll get a little bit trickier there, but there are some great recipes online. It is doable. And then you always also have that option of getting just like the gluten-free crusts and then adding your own cheese and toppings to them. And that would be a cost savings as well. So tip number one, naturally gluten-free products. Tip number two, make your own gluten-free treats, baked goods, etc. cetera. Um, referring to my little list over here because my brain is woohoo today. But what am I saying? Oh, yeah. So just like you would do with your regular gluten-containing products, if you shop and you buy products more in bulk, if you can afford to do that and you have the space to do that, you may save yourself money over time. Just, you know, do your price comparisons and see. But like I said in the beginning of this video, I have often bought like cases of gluten-free pasta. You know, you might have like six boxes in a case or like cases of, um, you know, the gluten-free flours online or directly from Bob's Red, Bob's Red Mill. So you have all of these options to potentially get a better price on these products if you just buy a few more of them. And that's the same with, you know, your regular shopping, you know, for your gluten containing food back before you had to eat this way. So that doesn't really um, change. My fourth and final tip, I would say, would be, if you know that, yeah, some things are gonna be a little bit more expensive depending on how you eat, like for instance, okay, you might be eating like basically a whole foods or like a naturally gluten-free diet, but you know, every once in a while you want a little pretzel snack or this, that, or the other thing, um, yeah, those pretzels are going to be more expensive. So maybe you're going to need a little bit more money in that budget to, to um, go towards your food. Okay. But 
you don't have to get the money. You don't have to have the savings all come from the food. What about if you start saving in other places and then you have a little bit of extra money to put towards, you know, your new way of eating and to get a couple extra things that you might want to try and have in your house? You know, start cutting in other places. And I was just thinking about this the other day as I was as I was doing stuff in my house. Um, let's talk, this is just one that I came up with, but cleaning your carpet and I use like the pet fresh, like carpet fresh things. And, and, you know, I'm not too comfortable always using them because of the artificial fri the flavor. I'm not eating this stuff, ah! the artificial fragrance and whatnot. But, um, you can do things like sprinkle baking soda on your floor to remove odors and vacuum that off instead of like these, like more expensive, like you know, carpet fresh products or Arm & Hammer, um, you know, carpet products and stuff like that. There are a lot of ways that you can save with that. You can bulk buy like your personal care products. Like I, my shampoo and conditioner, I don't buy it at the grocery store. I get it off Amazon. It's a really natural brand that I love. I think it's, is it Ren Pure? It's like a coconut, like, shampoo and conditioner, but it's a big bottle and it lasts me a long time. And it's a way huge saving, way, way big, way huge, way. It's, I'm saving a lot of money <laughs> by doing that. And that means that there's money to put towards other things, if, if you know what I'm saying. So these little things that you can do in your house in other um, areas can help so that you have a little bit more money to put towards that gluten-free food. And also so that you're saving money in general, right? And I'm probably going to start to go through some more of this stuff because I've been watching some really great YouTube channels where they talk about these things. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's great. Ooh, that I really, I really love that. Um, some of these little tips that are so simple that aren't going to impact your life in any great way, but can end up saving you money over the course of time. Woohoo! Win, winning. So anyway, those are just a couple tips to, um, you know, save you some money. To recap, one, buy naturally gluten-free foods. Two, bake your gluten-free treats and stuff at home using gluten-free flours and whatnot. Uh, three, buy in bulk if you can, if it's going to be a cost savings. And uh, last, cut in other areas just so that you can shift some of that budget towards you know your diet and the way that you have to eat and that's pretty much what i have for you today i hope that some of these tips have been helpful um, i know that they've definitely helped me over the course of um, my gluten-free journey and if you have any comments or questions or if you have any tips of how you save money having to eat this way please drop them down below shoot me a message and um, i love to hear from everybody and I will talk to you next time. Enjoy your gluten-free coffee.